Well, Captain, once again it is time for us to hammer out the urgent matter of pilot contract negotiations here at Americana Airlines. I don't know about you but it seems like only yesterday that we were signing the last contract together. The way we pulled together and won together was simply amazing. I have no doubt that we can achieve a mutual agreement again now, some seven years later. Don't you? By the way, it looks like the last seven years you guys have gained quite a bit of weight. Seems rather ironic, since you call us executives the fat cats. Uh, okay well, the last contract was a real win for my family. I held on to my retirement and only had to move back to first officer from captain and sell my house, cars, boat and Cessna that I was teaching my son to fly in. They say that one should confront a fear every day, and then overcome it. Commuting to reserve as a first officer in New York has its positive side, I get to meet so many new and interesting people. Not being able to contribute to a 401k no longer scares me, it's a good thing. I know that we will be just fine without money in it. I mean just look at all those poor Egyptians. They have nothing, but they found happiness in just ousting a president. You know, the Bagots in 2003 were a blessing. Learning how to live on much less money was a real good lesson for me and my family. We really didn't need all those material things, and my kids needed to learn the value of a dollar. Now they are working full-time and going to night school at the local community college. You know, there is one thing I have always admired about pilots, your strength and honor. You pilots are always able to find the silver lining in any situation. The sacrifices that you have made for your families, your co-workers, and your pro-physician are honorable. So, speaking of sacrifice, Maybe we should start talking about the next set of sacrifices that the pilots need to make. You and your cadre need to understand that there are going to be some tough decisions that will need to be made, and that they will not be popular. Americana Airlines will make these decisions, and there is nothing you will be able to do about it. You will need to explain to your pilot group that they will not be popular. After all, you do not think that we are going to enter into a contract that is not cost neutral to us, do you? If you want more money, you have to fly more hours. If you want to make what Federal Express pilots make, we will have to go down to 8,000 pilots working overtime. What do you think? Well, ugh. We don't want to fly more hours, but if we have to in order to help our families, our co-workers, and our profession, I am sure that 69% of our pilots will be willing to do it. What do you have in mind? Well, right now we are in a conundrum. We are having a cost problem with Eagle, if you know what I mean. Yes. I am aware of that. The Eagle pilots have been unreasonable with respect to work rules and pay. They are overpaid, and the retirement plan is too generous. Well, actually, the cost of fuel... Have you asked them for pay cuts? We took pay cuts in 2003 and they did not. As you can see it saved our jobs, our families, our co-workers. Retirees, and the rest of the world. Are you going to ask Eagle for pay cuts? We would like to see them pool together so we can all win together. We want them to take pay cuts now. Well, what we had in mind was for the Allied pilots fly the new 100-seat jets. Okay, I see. You want us to fly the 100-seat jets for less than Eagle would. I am sure that we'll be fine with at least 69% of my pilots. That will be more than enough to ratify this new contract. After all, we have pilots out on the street who are struggling to make a living wage. What pay rates do you have in mind? We need to capture that flying. The cost be damned. We were thinking about $116 per hour for a captain, and $73 per hour for first officers. After all, that is a bargain to get that flying. Right? Just think. No more eagle on your shoulders. Yes. 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 God yes. The pilots of Americana Airlines will once again fly the coveted 100-seat luxury jet. You are the best. You will put a sticker that says luxury jet on the side of it, won't you? Okay, so in return for the 100-seat jets, you were willing to give a scope relief on the 70-seat jets in return, correct? Wait just one minute, mister. 
You expect me to believe that you will not just buy a couple of hundred seat jets and lots of 70 seat jets and undo all of the benefit we will have received from that. Of course not. You will get to capture the 100 seat jet, but you give us relief to fly the 70 seat jets under the following circumstances. If a 100 seat jet leaves Little Rock for Dallas at 8.36 in the morning and is traveling at 490 knots it should be crossing the Cedar Creek arrival at 9.30 in the morning. Meanwhile, 14 70 seat jets will be departing. Okay, 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 enough. This is hurting my head. You can fly the 70 seat jets. Just promise that our 100 seat jet flying in our jobs will not suffer under some diabolical scheme that could cost us another lost decade in our careers. Okay. You have my word, Captain. This time, it will be different. Are you willing to allow these 100 seat jet pilots the ability to fly to the federal limits of 100 hours per month? Yes. Oh, God. Yes. 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 We want to be like Southwest. But, but, you have to put luxury jet on the side of the plane, okay? Okay, don't worry. It will say a luxury jet on the side. However, did I mention all hours up to 100 will be paid at 1 to 1 and it will not be pensionable since new hires will only get to 401k for now on. That is fine. Just give my pilots the luxury jets. Okay, done. How many hours can we negotiate with the other fleets for a monthly maximum? Does 88 hours sound good? No way. Do you think us Native Americana Airlines pilots are suckers? We have a quality of life here at Americana Airlines, and we intend to defend the profession against becoming a sweatshop. Okay, that is reasonable. Why don't you go and talk to your board of directors about the 100-seat jet piltos flying to the federal limits? And the rest main Xiang is status quo of 78 hours. Okay, I will, but they are going to tell you to shove it this time. They will tell you to go to hell. We won't stand for it, I tell you. Okay, that's enough for today. Let's talk about uniforms and hotels next week. Okay, a week has gone by, actually two weeks have gone by, and I have talked to my board of directors. Yes. What did they have to say about the 100-seat jet pilots flying up to 100 hours per month? They said that there is no way in hell some junior C-scale junior puke is going to make more money per month than me. Now all of our pilots want to fly to the federal limits. Will you let them? Well, I am going to have to talk to Mr. Airpay about it. I think we might be able to afford a payroll that big if you guys are willing to go without per diem for now on. Is that a possibility? We will have to do the math and get back to you. You know, there are guys saying that we should hire a professional negotiator, Mr. Smedley Rosenston. You know, I have a good mind to bring him in on the next meeting. What do you have to say about that? Well, let's not get carried away. Go and talk to your pilots and see if we can work out a deal. Just like we did in 2003. Hey. Has anyone ever told you that you would look good with one of those silver check airman plates on your uniform? Belay that. I think you ought to get your master's in business administration and come to work in management someday. Just think how far you could go. After all, I don't even have a college degree, and I am a millionaire puppy. We will see how you do against our professional negotiator, you sick puppy.